in Ireland we have an old saying that you bloom where you're planted. Like a tree, when it's replanted, we humans also need lots of tender love and care and nurture and sunlight and water and all the love we can get. How would you describe yourself? I was born and raised in Venezuela. My family's from India. I was born in Turkey. I'm Irish. I'm still in America on my green card. I have not become an American citizen in my 44 years. Yeah, and I'm from Indonesia. I'm Ecuadorian American. That's how I identify myself, meaning that I was born here in the United States, but my parents are originally from Ecuador. And I'm Haitian American. I am an immigrant myself because I came here two years and nine months ago. It was very emotionally intense because when you have very strong ties to your country or the place where you always grew up, it's very hard to let go. But when I came here, I kind of, I hated it because I felt like I was being taken away, away from my life and all my family and my grandma who I adored so much and all my friends back in Turkey. Even though I was only eight, I still had a life on my own there. I was in school. <laughs> Being born and raised here and having to um, teach my parents the American culture or helping them to assimilate into the American culture, so. Well, since my parents are immigrants, they're more used to the Indonesian customs, so I've grown up um, thinking like an Indonesian, speaking like one, acting like one. Since I was a kid, I've noticed that, you know, I wasn't like, I guess, I guess to paraphrase, like the other kids. I, I spoke Spanish at home. I grew up learning English on television. It's kind of like I've straddled two different worlds, the cultural Indian world and then growing up in America and being everything that it is to be an American child, an American teenager. And then some of the bad, I would say, would be some of the stereotypes I had to deal with, some of the obstacles of having a family who didn't really understand the culture. They always say, well, you don't sound like, you know, you're Haitian because of the uh, accent, as far as them having a French accent. And they always say, well, I don't look, or there's always some sort of features or how, you know, the dressing, the characteristics, as far as the clothing. I grew up in a pre predominantly white town in Pennsylvania and I was the only Indian kid in the school. So it was kind of trying to figure out um, how to fit into a place where I felt like I didn't really belong. So even though I go to a very diverse school, oftentimes they think that I am not going to be able to solve a math problem because stereotypically only Asian kids are good at math. So the typical Asian stereotypes is something that most kids have to go through that are Asian. <laughs> Um, since I go to a, a, a specialized film school, everyone thinks that I can do everything. I can do all their jobs, I can do everything for them, and I'd let it slide. And it just gives me more pressure and makes my work go down and degrade myself. What I want is people to know that because I have an accent doesn't mean that I am uneducated. What I want people to know is just because I have a different culture than anybody else, it doesn't make me less human. I want people to know that they should never be ashamed of looking different than everyone else. Being an immigrant or a child of immigrants gives you a whole different perspective on the world and it allows you to experience a culture that many people don't even have access to. Everyone to be happy. I really want, you know, not about it being the race and the culture and ethnicity and where you're from and, and so forth. I mean, it's pretty much all, the, it's all one human race. So I can remember when I was a child, my grandmother did not encourage me to play with other children, to even enjoy or know of other holidays such as Christmas. And now that I'm a grandmother, I think I do quite the opposite. I encourage involvement of my grandson with all holidays and with all children and with many different experiences. I was born right here in New York City, and my mother's family, which had the most influence on me, was from Russia in a small Jewish ghetto called the Shtetl. I was born in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, which is uh, the border city with El Paso, Texas. So I was, I grew up in the um, U.S.-Mexico border. I grew up in both countries.
it's very common uh, to have a lifestyle that deals with crossing back and forth between countries, sometimes every day. So, I mean, since before I was a year old, I was at consulates getting visas. And, you know, it was renewing visa, one visa after the other. And growing up in the U.S. was a challenge because I couldn't, for a long time, I couldn't really make plans for my future. I could only make plans until the expiration date of my current visa. And then planning out how to get the next one. Right now I have a 10 year visa and I can apply for a citizenship in a few years, which is nice. I can now make plans for my life. What, what was most difficult of crossing back and forth? What did you have to change? Border patrol agents tend to be really intimidating. So I remember every time we crossed the border, our parents would say, if they ask anything, just say you were visiting your grandma, or just say we just went to lunch. Even though we had done something completely different, we had a script. We had a, uh, a scripted answer every time a border patrol asked us what we were doing. And to this day, every time I cross a, a border patrol checkpoint, I know I'm being completely honest, but I feel something like I'm hiding something or, or you know. I think that's been the most difficult thing for me. Yeah. As someone who grew up from a, from a migrant family, what would you have liked your parents to do differently? Well, to accept more people who were, quote, different, and to let me accept people who were different, not of the same ethnic group and not of the same religious group. I remember I had a boyfriend and he, asked me to go to the spring prom one year and I knew I couldn't say yes because I'd have, he'd have to pick me up at home and when my parents heard his name which was very different than the, it was not a Jewish name. So my mother and grandmother especially were very determined to keep us children in the fold and didn't want us going out into the mainstream and so just being open and accepting and seeing and judging and making friends and being aware of the big world with many people in it. For some reason, I've had to deal with this my whole life, you know, being separated by a fence from my family and visas and not being able to see them. But I really hope that my children and my grandchildren and so on can invest their energy into something different. I hope that what I'm doing in this lifetime can, can really, in a way, heal my bloodline. I think uh, all human beings have the right to walk the earth, to explore this planet, and it just doesn't seem right to limit people's dreams for political reasons just because of a piece of paper. I'm from this country, you're from this country, and now I can't, I can never visit you or you can never visit me. That, that doesn't seem right. Come on! Bravo! Come on! That's so cute! I just brought this because this picture reminds me of like how there's like a space in the world that like is really open and like feels comfortable and I feel like isn't like it's very real and honest and it's it's like the ground the same ground that like my ancestors walked on and like the indigenous people that were here before pre-Columbus um, like walked on and it's like the same ground like it hasn't been developed and that's something that's also really special to me like I feel like that's really rare kind of. My name is Luna Olavaria Gallegos. I just moved to New York, but I'm originally from New Mexico. I identify as um, multi-ethnic, but I guess specifically I identify as um, native New Mexican and Puerto Rican. And the New Mexican part is really important because people don't recognize that it's like a culture that's actually really ancestral and 
a really important part of our, our like country's history because before before New Mexico was a state, before we robbed it of Mexico, there was like a group of people there that had really important like culture and food and the language and everything. And so they've actually maintained it there. And it's called New Mexican culture. That's like my whole family on my mom's side. And then on my dad's side, I'm Puerto Rican. And it's, that's also really important to me because there are things that are part of that culture and part of my culture that are just so like steeped in Afro-descendant um, like ancestry and in Taino ancestry and um, that's the indigenous people that were there before Columbus. So like I just like have a lot of pride and um, when I say like multi-ethnic, it's like definitely multi-ethnic but there's like just like a lot of Afro Afro diasporic culture, Latino, like Spanish, Jewish, and indigenous, all mixed into one. When I applied to middle school, my mom put on my on my like little application, like she was checking like what ethnicity and she was checking like Latino, like or Hispanic, like um, Native American, and then she checked black. And my dad was like, What? She's not black? And my mom was like, are you kidding me? Like, and they got in this huge fight about it. And I guess she was like, "Well, you can self-identify. You don't identify as black. Okay, we won't put that." Like, but then like later on, I remember just like, I guess it was just like a lot of conversations with my dad where I kept being like, "But dad, like you're followed around the store in the same way that black people are." Like, I was stopped by the police last weekend with my brother in the car, and like you had to have a conversation with us about it. Like, white parents don't have to do that. Hi, Dad. Because I've been like studying so much about my culture, and it just didn't make sense. Like I'm half black, and I have all these like very African like culture. My dad's like spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs, the food he cooks for us, everything like just made sense to me. Like I'm half black. Like my dad is black, um, but up until recently, he really denied that. So even though it's just like so obvious, like people have like kinky hair, like people have dark skin, that they will like not call themselves black. And then they also do that for indigenous. So like be like, oh yeah, like the indigenous people all died after Columbus. Like they didn't, they still like there are still indigenous people who dance, who have like the culture, who like have like my sis my grandmother says my sister looks like her grandmother who was Taina and they have like the same face. And but at the same time she'll say like but they all died. But it's like not true. So I just think that like there's just like separation and that can really really like mess with someone's mind especially if you're black and indigenous and you know it and there's like an inherent part of you that knows it to like have like a like a double consciousness always being like they're others but then they're also me so just like and it's just like a really tough thing to grow up with <laughs> for me I think that having a variety of culture and a variety of people and diversity I think that's really beautiful um, and I think that it's also just kind of necessary for us to like exist like in interesting lives. <laughs>